Hi, it's Rick here from the CAD Jewelry School and welcome to our Rhino Gold 4 orientation video. This video is aimed at people who have just installed Rhino Gold and not used it before. So it will give you an overview of the environment just to assist you with some of the later tutorials. Of course, if you've used Rhino Gold before, you're welcome to sit through this video. It's only fairly short and might serve as a refresher for some features and functions. Okay, so once you've installed Rhino Gold and Rhino 5, you'll have some icons on your desktop. Now, if you're running a 32 bit version of Windows, whether it's Windows 7 or Windows 8, if it's running on an older computer, you probably are running a 32 bit version of uh, Windows and you'll have a, a single icon on your desktop for Rhino 5 being the 32-bit version and you'll also have the icon there for Rhino Gold 4. Um, if you are running a more modern computer whether it's a desktop computer or a notebook or laptop computer especially those with dedicated video cards you'll find that you're probably running a 64-bit version of Windows and in that case the software will have installed both 32-bit and 64-bit shortcuts on your desk and if that's the case you would have two icons on your desktop a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version so if you do look we really don't need to use the 32-bit version we can just delete that into the recycle bin and if you also downloaded the my first model file uh, you should have that also on your desktop or a shortcut to that on your desktop there so let's go straight in and have a look at the Rhino Gold 4 interface so let's double click on the icon here which will launch a splash screen. The splash screen just sort of lists a few things from their blog now what you'll probably find is that the software takes a few moments to load up especially when it's running for the first time it actually has to go and load quite a number of different menus and some specific menus for the icons and buttons that we see up here in Rhino Gold 4. And sitting right behind or underneath if you like Rhino Gold is Rhino 5. So we can actually have access to all the functionality in Rhino 5 just from this command line here. We can type in a command, any command in Rhino 5 and it will execute because it's sitting here underneath or behind this interface that we see here. So just to explain what you're looking at here is we're greeted with four standard views, one being a top view, a front view, a right view, and a perspective view. And the easiest thing probably just to explain this is with the example my first model. So let's go over here to the file menu and from file we're going to open a file and it will prompt us to look at our desktop and there's the file my first model so just either double click to open it or click open here to open up that drawing and you see this a little more clearly here now so this is our top view and that's if you like is looking down at, at your hand or your finger the front view which is through the finger and that's looking front on we've got a right hand view and we've got a perspective view now let's just maximize the perspective view just so that we can see that in a larger area so if you just simply want to maximize one of the viewports you click in this viewport title so the name of the viewport is listed here top front right and perspective and simply by double clicking on the perspective viewport we can maximize that viewport now I still have access to the other viewports it's just that there are little tabs at the bottom of my viewport here that allow me to switch from one mode to another so I can switch for instance to the top view or I could switch to the front view or to the right now one other thing you'll notice if we switch back to our front view is that the front viewport is in a wireframe mode so it doesn't look nice and rendered as we've got in some of the other views now I can change that simply by coming up here and moving my cursor across to the right hand side of my viewport and across on the right hand side is 
a shortcut menu that gives you the settings for the different display modes in the software. So the viewport that you're seeing in some of the other views, that nice rendered view, is the third one along here. If I switch back to my wireframe mode, you'll see that that's the first of our views. The second view is a shaded mode. And this is a viewport that we'll be doing a lot of our tutorials in at various stages and we'll be switching from viewport to viewport so it's important that you get an understanding of how you can actually go about switching from one mode to another. So again we can change to our perspective view and if we want to change our display mode we simply come across moving our cursor across to the right hand side of our viewport and we can change it to a shaded mode or to a wireframe mode. I'll just go back to the rendered viewport here. Now there are a few other display modes. Really the only other ones we generally use are the ghosted display. And this display mode allows you to see through an object. So it's good when you're looking at, let's say, these stones, if we were looking in the front view here, and we wanted to switch to our ghosted display, we can see the stones here through the front of the ring there you'll see that if I do change that viewport back to shaded I can't see through there so if I'm looking to do some work in this viewport I might need to switch either to the wireframe mode to see those stones or switch to the ghosted display to get a better view of them okay let's go back to the perspective view and I'll show you how we can actually zoom in and zoom out on objects on screen so you may have noticed just then I was moving in and moving out of the drawing and moving it around somewhat. So there are a few important key combinations that you're going to need to learn and to practice and you'll get use of these during the tutorials that we go through. So the first thing is using your middle scroll wheel on your mouse. So most modern day mouses have a middle scroll wheel. It's a tiny little sort of circular wheel in the center of your mouse. And that scroll wheel allows you to either scroll in or out. So if you scroll forward, it's, it's moving into the drawing. And if you scroll backwards, it's like it's pulling out. So it's quite intuitive, and you'll find that it won't take you too long to get used to that. The other important thing to explain about the scroll wheel is that it moves or tries to center its focus on the object that you're pointing to. So for instance, if I was pointing at the bottom of this ring band, and I wanted to change my focus to that, I could scroll in and you can see that I can see that quite clearly now or I can scroll back out. If I wanted to change my focus to some of the stones at the back of this ring or let's say this prong here, I can scroll in and you'll see my focus stays there or I can look at the bottom of the ring band again. So again it can, becomes very intuitive when you're actually wanting to look at a particular thing you, you just simply move your cursor to that point and start to scroll with your mouse and you'll be able to zoom in on that very very quickly let's try that in one of the other display modes we'll switch to the rendered mode and let's scroll in and focus your mouse on the center of that large stone if we want to focus on the bottom section of the ring band we can scroll with our mouse pointed at that point on the ring we can scroll to that point so as I say I think you'll find it quite intuitive and it won't take you long to get used to that the other thing that I should point out is the ability to pan or to shift your viewport around now in the perspective view and this works just in the perspective view if you hold down your right mouse button you would normally rotate the view. So holding down my right mouse button allows me to rotate my view in the perspective mode. If I change to one of the other viewports and try my right mouse button, what it does is pans the view. So it doesn't actually change the view, it, it doesn't change the angle that we're looking at. All it does is it's like holding a sheet of paper and moving it around on your desktop. So click with your right mouse button and your, your icon will change to a hand symbol to indicate that you're in the pan mode and you can actually pan that viewport around. Okay, let's have a look at the perspective viewport now. So just click on the word perspective at the bottom of your viewport there. 
and if we use our right mouse button now instead of panning in this view we rotate around it so you can keep holding down your mouse button to have a look a closer look at your object and oftentimes you need to combine this with zooming as well so you can just take your finger off the mouse and zoom to a particular position and if you need to, to rotate that you can hold down your right mouse button to have another look at it. Let's scroll back out again. Let's focus on this prong here. Move your cursor there and just scroll in. And if we want a closer look around it, we can move that viewport around. Just pushing our mouse up and down, left and right, or around. So look, it is again one of those actions that you'll get used to, especially using the scroll wheel to scroll in and, and out and right mouse button to rotate that view. Now remember that right mouse button in the other viewports will just pan your view. We can of course pan in the perspective viewport so we'll switch to the perspective viewport and instead of just clicking our right mouse button we have to hold our shift button down at the same time so if you look at your keyboard hold down the shift button whilst clicking with your right mouse button and you'll see that you can pan in that view and there are times when you out your drawing you know moves out of the area of your screen somewhere that you do need to pan it back into view so you can't sort of simply just scroll out and see it sometimes you actually will need to pan it to move it back into view so remember hold down the shift button on your keyboard and whilst you're holding that down hold down your right mouse button and if you if you hold your right mouse button down and move your mouse left and right you'll see it panning or up and down so it's not actually rotating the view it's just panning that page that piece of paper again all right we'll look at a few other things so let's use our scroll wheel to scroll back in here in this front viewport and with our mouse button you may have already found this if you actually click on an object on screen you will select it so because those prongs are a group of prongs it clicking on one will select all of them in the case of that central stone if I click on that it just individually selects that stone and the same with the gemstones on the ring now if we do want to select multiple items we have to hold down our shift button to do that and we can click on each one that we want selected so we could click on the central stone for instance and holding our shift button down we could click on one of the prongs there to select the prongs as well clicking away from the object deselects it so click to select shift hold your shift button down and click to select multiple items to deselect an item, click anywhere on the grid or you can hit escape on your keyboard. Let's move to our top viewport. If we wanted to select the entire ring and all the elements, we could hold our left mouse button down and it will start to draw a bounding box. It's a rectangular shaped bounding box that we draw around our objects to select all of them we can also do that in the perspective mode if we scroll out we can hold down our left mouse button and draw a box a rectangle around all of the objects we want to select and let go to select all of them so draw a bounding box around everything holding down your left mouse button and drawing a box around So to, select, so to select everything in this perspective viewport, I can click and hold down my left mouse button here and drag it across, making sure it's around everything. To deselect it, press either escape on your keyboard or just click on the grid somewhere with your left mouse button. Okay, that's it for this initial orientation. In the next video, we'll take a look at few other menus and shortcuts to assist you when drawing.